This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So, as you may have seen slightly earlier in the week, I borrowed this 1968 Gibson SG Special of Francisco, who lives down the road. And um, basically, I met Francisco at a jam night before lockdown, and um, he's called Dr. Seven is his alias that he uses for music and stuff. Amazing player, kind of plays um, amazing kind of Spanish classical style as well as being able to kind of do the Eddie Van Halen kind of shred thing that 
uh, kind of, I guess, most of us are interested in as well. I, I don't know why I'm speaking for all of us. But anyway, um, thanks very much to Francisco for letting me borrow that. I borrowed it for like a day. I actually did quite a lot of playing on it, um, especially given that recently I've not been able to play that much. But that guitar, I, I played a lot. And the reason for asking Francisco if I could borrow that, um, basically he offered, you know, that I could borrow some of his bits of gear if ever I needed something for something. And I got the bat signal from Keith from 5 Watt World, who has a video coming up, I think, next week uh, around the his favourite or the most important uh, SG players in the world. Um, yes, all that is to say that this is the reason that... Um, uh, essentially 56, I think is the maths, year old guitar, ended up in my lap for about a day playing that. Now, I'm a little bit of a skeptic around a lot of things, particularly in the gear world, and uh, I feel like with this vintage guitar thing, it's very easy to kind of dismiss it because the price tags on these things is now becoming pretty insane. Um, so, I don't know, that was kind of the the idea for the video is kind of, you know, are these vintage guitars, is there some extra mojo to these? Is there a bit of BS around this? Is there a bit of kind of hype? And I think, obviously, you're probably going to have your own answers for that, which you can answer in the comments if you want to help the video do well in that way. But actually, playing this guitar has shown me a, a few things so i'm not necessarily an sg guy i think i'm going to probably do a video in future kind of asking why i've never owned an sg because for me actually it probably suits me spec wise quite a lot better than a les paul it's lighter sleeker um basically sounds quite similar but doesn't have the the massive weight behind it there's, there's plenty more other playing clips that I've got with it, basically, is what I'm trying to tell you. 1968 was, like, it's a lot of time. My mum was born in 1964. My dad was born in 1961. So when I see a kebab, I don't know whether to eat it or... No. Um, so a guitar that's basically about as old as my parents. Now, here's the, the thing with the vintage thing. So Tom Buchvac, Uncle Larry, actually commented on the video that I did with it and said, if you like that guitar... You should check out one from about four years earlier um, because the, the guitar that I was playing had the narrow nut spec, um, which apparently was a change that they made. So what I'm finding is that, you know, the deeper you go down these little rabbit holes, the vintage guitar thing is a whole other world um, where there are lots of experts. Uh, you can get really in detail on kind of the specifics on this stuff. Um, for me, actually, I found that narrow nut was quite interesting to play I, I wasn't I don't think struggling with the guitar and it seems to have sort of a, a bit of a softer fluty quality to some of the the attack of the notes is one of the things I feel like is happening there but the main things that you get with a vintage guitar is the idea of buying a piece of history right it's kind of um, a desirable thing I guess you also have the potential increase in value um, the prestige, you know, hopefully the guitar has a bit of a story. What I really liked about Francisco's, and I think Chris Buck did this as well with the guitar, the Strat, which you don't often see him play, I don't know if he still has it, but was to find a, a guitar which essentially was pretty much player grade slash wrecked and restore it. I think there's quite a nice idea around that. So Francisco's guitar itself was kind of painted black and missing parts and stuff like that so he basically had it refinished back to what it should have been and had frets redone but the thing about the vintage guitar thing is that I don't think I could ever really buy one of these things without it always being in the back of my mind like is this legitimate have I actually got what I paid for because it's become such a market that you really need to be an expert in it or know someone who is to, to make sure that you're not getting fleeced and I hear stories because I, I have a, a friend Phil who has uh, a vintage strap that I've managed to play and that is also one of the favorite videos that Keith has that I played I played that through a champ um, um, anyway yeah he, but there's like various guitars floating around the UK that have changed hands a lot of times and they have like a little bit of a backstory um, that the, the vintage guitar aficionados seem to know about 
as well as sort of flakes, fake flakes, fakes floating around. So I, I, for me, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to jump into that market, especially having played them. So here's the, the point. So I think that a vintage guitar is going to be basically like most other guitars in that when you just really sit down and play it, either you gel with the guitar or you don't particularly. Now, I've played a few examples. I've played Mick from that pedal show Strat. I think he had a 70s Strat as well, which I played. Neither of them, those personally blew me away. Um, I played a 1964 Strat. I, again, these are all great instruments, but personally didn't speak to me as much as that SG did. Um, what else? Uh, David Beebe's got a, a 50s uh, ES175, which is really cool. And he actually got that for a steal, um, you know, way less than he would have paid actually for even a modern ES175, which is bonkers. Yeah, but, but with most of this, this stuff, I haven't played enough to really know what I'm talking about, of course. But I don't feel like I sound necessarily particularly different to, to any other instrument that I might have played on. Um, and possibly, you know, I'm not a good enough player to, to get the best out of these things or uh, sound the same on everything anyway, which is definitely not not true so for me I, I don't the the main thing that would scare me off of this sort of thing would be the counterfeit side of things which i think is probably growing increasingly given that the market and the potential value of these things is increasing you can read a few kind of horror stories online about that sort of stuff um but yeah the, the, here's the main difference is what i think this has shown me is if you look at the fretboard of francisco's guitar so I think that the main thing that I'd be looking for out of these instruments is something that has a story that has been played for most of the, the 60 years of its life rather than something that just sat in a case. Um, because it, I assume if it's been sat in a case that it was a guitar that wasn't necessarily well loved. And I think part of what we like about the kind of vintage thing is the idea that it's had a story that it's been playing music for most of its life you know maybe seen the inside of some clubs maybe had some smoke on it at some point or another but yeah the, the thing is that you think about something like a murphy lab or something like that where they're trying to get this old vibe i don't think they actually get that close if you look at francisco's guitar there's these huge kind of divots in the in the fretboard which actually don't get in the way when you're playing but that sort of thing you know they don't put on the, the Murphy Lab stuff, uh, you know, the, the fretboards are immaculate and clean, which, again, is not a bad thing. It's just a different thing. I think that's part of why you don't really get that same old feel um, necessarily with uh, Relic guitars because they're kind of selective with the Relic in that they do. Um, as much as they're good at it and as much as they can look aesthetically pretty great, and, you know, Jake's Murphy Lab that I played is amazing, I just don't think... Yeah, you don't get that kind of worn fretboard vibe. But equally, luckily, you don't get things like huge dents in the neck and divots and stuff. Whereas on an actual old kind of vintage guitar, you're definitely going to be looking probably at a guitar which has got some battle scars over the decades. Uh, this is a 22-year-old guitar um, and doesn't have anything on the neck. Um, you know, and 20 years is basically the distance right between when those guitars started to, to kind of become the thing that people wanted and were seeking out. I guess also the very last point I'll make on it is that there was a golden era for Fender and Gibson, right? That's pretty much understood, but I don't think there has been a golden era for other brands in the same way. What I mean is that there are still brands that are making great guitars to this day Whereas Gibson and Fender, maybe we don't necessarily think are doing their best work can, you know, when we look at what was happening in the fifties and sixties. So if you want that kind of vibe, I still think there are people building guitars to the same quality that Fender and Gibson were back then is my kind of general feeling on this. If you look at something like a K-Line guitar, you know, that's built pretty similarly to you'd assume how uh, Fender were building stuff back in the day. Or if you look at something like Fibonari, or Seth Bacchus, or these kind of boutique builders and uh, custom builders, if you want that kind of quality, then you don't necessarily have to buy a six decade old guitar. Um, and yes, you won't have the same resale value and all that stuff, but I do think you can pretty 
commonly find guitars that play just as well as these vintage guitars or play better frankly um, but also have plenty of mojo and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm.